Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Kicking It With Quran. Today I have Robert Goldberg, CEO of Prosper DTX, uh, and we're going to talk all things healthcare. Welcome, Bob. How are you doing? Thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Quran. Thanks for having me virtually. Uh, of course, of course. At some point, you know, we're going to get away from this... Uh, work at home and somehow we're, we're gonna do this thing, uh, you know, uh, in physical uh, space, uh, hopefully in the near future. Um, I will hold you to it, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So for my audience, uh, please introduce yourself, what you do, what Prosper DTX does. Um, I am particularly interested, healthcare has been uh, sort of an interesting space, especially uh, in the HPC and data science space, uh, you know, in my past yeah. history. So very, very excited to sort of hear what your team does, uh, you know, what you do in healthcare specifically. Hi, I'm Bob Goldberg. Um, I have a PhD in uh, economics and political science. Uh, for the last 25 years, I've been working on uh, ways to increase access um, to healthcare, especially for, you know, access to new innovations. And Prosper DTX to me is, is was founded um, a few months ago to uh, apply causal machine learning, which is a novel method of machine learning, new mathematical process, to uh, massive amounts of personal uh, health data that in turn is used to generate predictive and personalized care plans to keep people healthy out of the hospital and, and, and thriving. And we're focused, our initial focus is on COVID, cancer, and people with, uh, with rare diseases. Got it. How did how did the idea come about? I mean, it was is it just coincidence that you know the pandemic happened and uh, you know this idea came about, or was there was there? I'm, I'm guessing there was obviously much more sort of thought process behind it. The problem is, you know, we've already we've always known that with any disease, there are uh, preventable and avoidable situations that continually keep coming up, and we continually pay for. Uh, we realize that if you're able to develop causal models to identify which um, disease pathways or, or uh, were causing certain conditions and get ahead of that, you can actually prevent um, some of the most expensive and debilitating aspects of healthcare. So for instance, in cancer, 50% uh, of all uh, hospitalizations in the first year after care is, are avoidable, but people keep going. We have developed algorithms that will allow us to identify the people that are at highest risk for these conditions um, or these situations and provide individuals with um, care recommendations. We are doctors, by the way, but recommendations for avoiding it um, and linking them to their physicians and other resources to make it possible. In the case of cancer, dehydration, very common. How often, but you don't want to pay a doctor to remind you or uh, to, to eight, drink eight glasses of water today or drink Gatorade. Um, we can develop algorithms to remind people to, to do that and monitor progress. In the case of rare diseases, uh, we're doing a project with the NIH and um, multi, multi, muscular dystrophy patient organizations to eliminate the leading causes of hospitalization and mortality in adult um, uh, mus Duchenne muscular dystrophy individuals. Um, pressure alters, uh, bone fractures, and chronic constipation, believe it or not. All these things, again, are predictable, avoidable, mm -hmm. um, and we are planning to, and these are things that keep people, undermine the quality of life the most, even over and above what the, the, uh, the effect of the disease, right. disease are. That's, that's, that's extremely interesting. So um, you mentioned uh, an interesting comment there that your staff is, you know, mostly doctors and, and uh, you know, you've got a PhD yourself. Is that, is that the case across your team? I mean, it's mostly, you know, doctors and sort of scientists and data scientists. And also where are you, I'm guessing when you're building these models, it's based on historical patient data, right? How are you sort of gathering, collecting this data? How are you yeah. building these models to be sort of intelligent, uh, so to speak? Well, first of all, a lot of the commercial databases are, um, are very, very expensive and they're incomplete and there's not much you can do with them. Uh, we license a technology that allows us to um, obtain patient level longitudinal data that can be updated in real time 
for individual patients with about two or three clicks of the, of the mouse. Uh, sometimes it takes a little bit longer because it's a patient consent driven process and we have to support and help uh, people access their data from different um, portals or convert it from PDF into, into clinical. But that one time upfront effort is so much, um, it, it just pays dividends because once the data is captured, you can not only capture the electronic medical records, uh, you can also, uh, your, your wearables, we can mm -hmm. uh, collect genetic tests, imaging, you name it. Of course, you know, we have uh, uh, Oracle as a partner in our autonomous database will collect all this data. But then so it's, it's a lot of different sources coming in. A lot of different sources from multiple places. We're probably, we're the only company that I know that has that technology to achieve patient-centered um, data ingestion using interoperability, so, um, uh, not interoperability solution. Mm -hmm. So, awesome. plain data alone just won't do it. Got it. Got it. And then obviously the IP that you're developing on top of this data is what really sort of sets you apart from some of your competitors. I'm guessing is is the intelligence around these models and, and the yes. predictability. Yeah. Right. Like, and, and listen, you know, machine learning. There's everything is open source. It's the the application use of it. One of the, we have two differences. One is we're not, most machine learning is just pattern recognition. It can tell you what would happen if everything remains the same, but once one variable changes or one, something does, something unanticipated happens um, in, in the future, those models fall apart. Uh, causal inference, uh, which was established and created by Judea Pearl, who won the Turing Prize for his work in causal inference, allows you to ask and answer counterfactuals using the graphical models. Um, and you're bringing, an, um, whereas most people try to learn from data what's gonna happen. Data is basically very dumb. You have to bring the, the uh, uh, underlying uh, domain knowledge assumptions, and that's where the, 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 our involvement with patient groups and physicians uh, come into play. Got it. You use those, those uh, underlying causal assumptions to see if the data can explain certain patterns. Mm -hmm. And we have the ability to just do that millions and millions of times for each patient. So it's almost like doing um, digital clinical trials for each patient uh, in, in real time. Got it. And I think that's really tapping into the promise of uh, that's where the big data can really play a valuable role. So the final question I guess I have is, um, is, is, is on the Oracle side, you know, why'd you pick Oracle and, and what are you doing on Oracle cloud? One of the reasons that I chose Oracle is because it's not just because it's open source, but it's attitude about, it, it really does treat you as partners, not as serfs or as, uh, as sharecroppers in the, the healthcare space. And the other thing is that the, the service and the flexibility, the service is unparalleled. No one's paying me to say this, folks. I mean, I just, this is my experience. The service is unparalleled. The, the, the engineers are innovative. And uh, everybody that we've hired in the past uh, three months, when we tell them we're working on Oracle and Jupyter Notebooks, their eyes light up. It's, they love the experience. The final thing is that because it, it, it's, it's a full um, retail to high level solution, we're gonna be using Apex, uh, Oracle Apex to develop the patient facing apps that yep. will allow us yep. to really deliver that personalized care. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us, giving us a very little insight into, you know, what Prosper DTX does, what you guys do on Oracle. Uh, truly appreciate the partnership and, and the work that we put in together. Um, and uh, thank you folks. Join us next time on another episode.